What's up YouTube, Ian Sandusky back here again for Let's Machine. Today we're going to go through how to use the engraving functions in Mastercam X9. If you have Mastercam 2017, it's the exact same thing, I just haven't upgraded yet. To uh, teach you how to do that, we're going to be making some little furniture tags. These are some uh, little furniture tags I made out of bronze for a high-end furniture company. They uh, wanted their logo and uh, a serial number on each one. So I'm going to show you how I made these. Let's go upstairs, take a look at Mastercam. So here we go guys. Here is my geometry. Uh, you can see here, I actually left this here. Um, occasionally Mastercam will do kind of silly things like this, where when you import something it'll bring up a whole bunch of points. I left it there because it's important to know that Mastercam, even though things can look kind of silly like that, it's still gonna work just fine. So don't get too concerned if you pull in some geometry or whatever and it looks like that, all right? So what we're gonna do for our engraving operation is we're gonna go to Toolpaths, Engraving, wherever it may be. Now we're gonna get Chain Selection. Now I'm gonna select it, things just as normal chains. I'm not gonna do an area select because I have some weird geometry here, okay? So if I go along, we can select geometry the exact same way we would for anything else. So you can understand kind of what's going on here. My top geometry here, I brought in. This is their logo. This is a very specific font. Um, it's not one that I created with Mastercam. This, this lettering down here, I created using the create letters function. So it's already perfect. If you can tell, watch this. If I go to select this A, you'd see I need to go along and follow the chains. But if I go to one of these letters down here, for instance, I click once, the entire chain is selected. It's just a difference in the way that Mastercam creates geometry, um, just kind of the way it goes. When we select these, I always want to select the outside, then the inside. I don't know if it matters, but that's the way I've always done it, and that's the way I have used that that makes it work. Um, it may work the other way. I don't know if you go inside, then outside, and then inside again if it'll work. Who knows, it might. So we'll go, we'll just kill that operation, that's okay, because I already have one here. So our parameters, um, when you go to pull up a tool for this, it'll give you this list of engraving tools. I chose, what tool did I choose here? I choose, chose one with a 90 degree tip uh, and a 1000 tip diameter. Um, obviously I'm not actually using that, I'm using um, that engraving tool that I showed you. But it'll work. It'll work just fine. Um, feed rate, 20 inches a minute. I could probably go faster because I'm not going that deep, but that's fine for what we're doing. Plunge rate, uh, I don't want to be jamming that tip in too fast, so that's what I'm going to leave it at, 10 inches a minute. Spindle speed, 7500 RPM. Engraving parameters, um, depth of minus 3000. You know, we just want to make it visible and look good. We don't need to really hammer it in there. Um, clearance, we could probably go to one inch. Doesn't really need to be that high. It could be half inch for all we care. It could be quarter inch, but whatever. I like to have a little bit of clearance in there. Uh, roughing finishing. So when you first open this, it's going to look like this. If you just select this here, I'll show you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is what it's going to do. So it's going to go and engrave the inside and outside. And then the corners, you can see here, to get those corners nice and sharp, it follows a path up into the corner there, which is nice, works really well. But essentially, you're gonna have all this still left in the inside. So what we wanted to do is go and mill, essentially pocket all this out with a tiny little tool path. So the way we do that is we turn on roughing. I typically use zigzag, um, step over how much you want it step over. Um, it's gonna step over one thou. We could probably bump that up, but whatever. Again, we're only making a couple of these. It's okay if it takes a little longer. Um, step over, you usually want a 50%. Uh, you don't want a 100% step over because then it may have, um, oh yeah, that corrects itself. Because then it may have little lines in there. Um, cut geometry at depth or on top. I usually leave it on top. Just kind of works better for what I'm doing. Uh, you can experiment with that to see what works. So now when we regen this tool path, yeah, okay. You can see it's going to do that same thing, finish the external and external geometry, but it's also going to go through and engrave this all out. Um, 
And you can see here, remember on that one that I told you it looked all kind of screwy? It does the same thing. It ignores all these little points. Um, again, just goes to show, even though it looks a little messed up, always give it a shot. It might work. Uh, save you a headache. Um, for these lines here, uh, I'm just doing as a contour with no uh, offset, no compensation type. That just makes the engraving tool follow that line. Um, this is their design. This is how they want it. So that's what we're going to give them. Okay, let's go downstairs. We're going to run this in the four. Uh, I'll show you what we're going to hold this thing with. Yeah, that external uh, contour there, that's just to cut it out when it's all done. But uh, I'll show you the little fixture I made and I'll show you what kind of tool we're going to use for this. All right. So as you can see here, what I've done is I've made a little fixture uh, to be able to hold the bronze tags and cut them out. So all I've done is drilled two holes, countersunk them in a piece of bronze. This goes on here. It'll hold it nice and flat for the engraving process. For the engraving, we're using a Destiny Tool Engraver. Uh, you can see it's not even a particularly new one. You can see that the tip's kind of uh, been eroded a little bit. But uh, yeah, this is what we're gonna use to engrave. If you don't have an engraving tool, you can definitely use an old chamfer mill like I've showed you before. Um, or you can use a center drill, you know, whatever you got on hand, pretty much anything will work as long as it's got a, a point on it. We're only doing engraving to a depth of about 3,000, so, you know, we don't need a whole lot of room with it. So there you have it guys, that's how we're going to do engraving with the master cam engraving function. I hope it's been helpful. Thank you very much as always for tuning in and coming to hang out with me. Uh, if you like this video, make sure you like and subscribe below. Uh, that's why I know people are watching this. Thank you very much guys. You take care.